areas that we we are looking at. Look at the overview of sickle cell disease causes. We want to look at the types of sickle cell anemia, clinical manifestations or signs and symptoms, complication of sickle cell disease. We want to look at some um, treatment options and whether or not you can prevent it. So again, we say sickle cell disease is really a group of inherited red blood cell disorders that affects hemoglobin, the protein that carries oxygen to the body. Normally, red blood cells are this shape and we had showed it last week and we're gonna show it again this week and flexible to move easily through the blood vessels. If one has sickle cell disease, one's red blood cell are crescent or sickle shape. And these cells do not bend and move easily and can block blood flow to the rest of the body. So this is normal red blood cell. This is a sickle. And you see both of them together. This is even a better representation of sickle than the one that I showed before. But you see how round and, um, the red blood cell is. So it is able to squeeze and to go through blood vessels quite easily. But the sickle one tends to clog up, get clogged up in the blood vessels. And not only that, but it breaks down easily too. The black blood flow through the body can lead to serious problems, including strokes, eye problem, infection, and episode of pain called pain crises. Having sickle cell disease also raises the risk for severe illness from COVID-19. You hear them talk about underlying illnesses, people who have underlying illnesses, sometimes they are more susceptible, are more exposed to COVID-19, which is caused in the pandemic that we are experiencing now. So sicklers, uh, I have known though that some persons who have died maybe have, have had sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease, one thing we have to learn, it is a lifelong illness. Just like if you have um, if you have um, high blood pressure, can be a lifelong illness. If you have diabetes, it is, can be a lifelong. That doesn't mean that it has to be out of control throughout your life. It's the same way with um, sickle cell. Although it is a lifelong illness, it can be managed. A blood and bone marrow transplant is currently the only cure for sickle cell disease. But there are effective treatments that can reduce symptoms and prolong life. The healthcare team will work with patients on a treatment plan to reduce their symptoms and manage the condition. But when we talk about um, a bone marrow transplant, that is a sophisticated um, thing that we are not even doing in Jamaica. So patients in Jamaica, if they were going to depend on bone marrow transplant, all of them would live with their illness uncontrolled. So it is really first world country to do that type of thing. We in Jamaica don't start to do. But bone marrow transplant can be done for other things such as people who are suffering from a type of bone cancer that they call leukemia. But even for that, we're not doing bone marrow transplant as it in Jamaica. So what are the types of sickle cell anemia? Last week, um, Sister Sharon Shirley started to share, but I said I was not gonna touch that last week. But this week we are going to talk about the type 
of sickle cell anemia when they are several types. People who have sickle cell disease have abnormal hemoglobin called hemoglobin S or Are sickle hemoglobin in their red blood cells. Hemoglobin oh my God, I miss it. is a protein in red blood cells that carries oxygen to the body. People who have sickle cell disease inherit two abnormal hemoglobin genes, one from each parent. All right, and these are the types of sickle cell disease. So you have hemoglobin S and B stand for beta O thalassemia, hemoglobin B plus thalassemia, hemoglobin SC, hemoglobin SD, hemoglobin SE, and hemoglobin SS. So out of all that we have presented here, hemoglobin SS is the most serious one. And as you hear, you will hear, or if I did not say that before, if your parents are carriers of the hemoglobin um, trait, they will have S the S part of the hemoglobin and some other part. So if you inherit S from your mother and S from your father, you would be a full blown person with a um, sickle cell disease. But when we reach further, you will see that um, there is about a 25% chance that if your parents, both of them are carriers, you could have normal hemoglobin, which is SA. In all types of sickle cell disease, at least one of the two abnormal genes causes a person's body to make hemoglobin S. When a person has two hemoglobin S genes, hemoglobin SS, the disease is called sickle cell anemia. This is the most common and often most severe type of sickle cell disease. Hemoglobin SC disease and hemoglobin S beta thalassemia are two other common type of sickle cell disease, but they are less severe. Hemoglobin SD and hemoglobin SE are much less common. So the causes of sickle cell disease, sickle cell disease, as we mentioned, is inherited and is caused by defects, which are called mutation in the beta globulin gene that helps make hemoglobin. All right. So we are talking about from, you hear them talk about, um, when you talk about beta, you are talking about the original material. Sometimes sometime, um, the technology companies send out a product that they say it is beta. And sometimes they have people who can look at the beta, watch the beta, I use the beta, and then they can send back report to the company to say whether or not it is functioning good. Well, this is the original material that is used to make hemoglobin, beta globin gene that helps make hemoglobin. Normally hemoglobin in red blood cells take up oxygen in the lung and carries it through the arteries to all the cells in the tissues of the body. Red blood cells that contain normal hemoglobin are this shape, as I mentioned, and just want to re-emphasize, and flexible. 
so that they can carry, they can move easily to large and small blood vessels to deliver oxygen. Sickle hemoglobin is not like normal hemoglobin. The mutations in the gene cause a problem when oxygen level in the blood are lower, which occurs once the hemoglobin has delivered oxygen to the cells in the body's tissue. With less oxygen, the abnormal hemoglobin S gene can cause rigid non-liquid protein strands to form within the red blood cell. These rigid strands can change the shape of the cell, causing the sick red blood cell that gives the disease its name. I know that we're going in a little dip here, but um, you don't have to remember all of this, but just know that um, the hemoglobin that um, causes um, sickle cell disease. It has a sickle shape, and we show you what the sickle shape look like. While the normal red blood cell has a different shape, more rounded shape. All right, so this is depicting um, like two parents with um, sickle cell trait. The blue is indicative of normal hemoglobin. So the parents with sickle cell trait, they have normal hemoglobin gene and they have a sickle hemoglobin gene, which is not dominant. All right, their children now can have either no sickle cell. So they have two normal hemoglobin, as you see here. Or they could inherit the trait from them, have a normal hemoglobin gene. Or, as you see here, they have the trait from them. Or they could get the full-blown sickle cell anemia, as you see over there, represented by the red. So that, those are possibilities. So within this scenario, you have 25% normal, 50% can get a trait, and another 25% will get the full-blown disease. So in the image above, each parent has one normal hemoglobin A gene and one hemoglobin S gene, which means each of their children has 25% chance of inheriting two normal hemoglobin A gene. In this case, the child does not have sickle cell trait or disease. They have a 50% chance of inheriting one normal hemoglobin gene and one hemoglobin S gene. This child will have sickle cell trait. 50% of them will have sickle cell trait. And another 25% that was mentioned will get the S from each parent and get the full-blown disease. These are some depiction of um, red blood cells in a, in a blood vessel that is open. And these are normal red blood cells. Here you can see a few normal, but most of them are sickle. Most of them have the sickle shape. They are not rounded. Sickle shape cells are not flexible and can stick to vessel walls, causing a blockage that slows or stops the flow of blood. You know that if blood is carrying oxygen and if it is stopped, there must be some consequences which are not good. So oxygen to that part of the body will be lessened and they don't get any, it doesn't get any oxygen at all. And when any part of the body doesn't get oxygen, it will die. 
the lack of oxygen in tissue can cause attack of sudden severe pain called pain crisis. These, these pains attack can occur without warning. And a person who has them often needs to go to the hospital for effective treatment. You have to rush them to hospital and they give them a lot of fluid and pain medication and treat them on, with other, other things based on their symptoms. Some people, if they stay home, they might just um, die. And the, the, the pain can be so excruciating that they will not be able to tolerate it at home. I think this should be because, because sickle cells cannot change their shape easily. They tend to burst apart. Normal red blood cells live about 90 to 120 days. But sickle cell lasts only 10 to 20 days. The body is always making new red blood cells to replace the old ones, the old cells. However, in sickle cell disease, the body may have trouble keeping up with how fast the cells are being destroyed. Because of this, the number of red blood cells is usually lower than normal. And this condition is called anemia and can cause a person to have less energy. So they suffer from fatigue, apart from the pain that we talk about, but anybody who has severe anemia is going to be weak. They will have shortness of breath and um, not have a lot of energy to, to work about. So when you talk about shortness of breath, some people, you hear them talk about long COVID. People who have long COVID, some of them suffer from shortness of breath and other problems, what they call brain fog and so on. We're talking about healthy, formerly healthy people who cannot think properly, but I'm not talking about COVID. I'm just talking about sickle cell anemia tonight. All right, so how hemoglobin gene is inherited? When the hemoglobin S gene is inherited, from only one parent and a normal hemoglobin gene. Hemoglobin A is inherited from the other. That person will have sickle cell trait. People who have sickle cell trait are generally healthy. Only rarely do people have sickle cell trait have complications similar to those seen in people who have sickle cell disease. But people who have sickle cell traits are carriers of a defective hemoglobin S gene, so they can pass it on when they have a child. If the child, other parents also have sickle cell trait or another abnormal hemoglobin gene, such as beta thalassemia, hemoglobin C, hemoglobin D, or hemoglobin E, that child has a chance of having sickle cell disease. But we say that the most severe form of sickle cell disease is sickle cell SS. And you see how many times I kind of repeat it for emphasis. What are some of the signs and symptoms of sickle cell disease or clinical manifestation? If a person has sickle cell disease, although it is present at birth, but most newborns do not have any problem from the disease until they're about five or six months of age. Still, uh, they're still um, small and unable to appreciate what is happening to them, but it is that early that they start to have symptoms. The symptoms of sickle cell disease can vary from person to person and can change over time. Over time, one may experience symptoms depending on all sickle cell disease affects one's health. Early symptoms of sickle cell disease may include yellowish color of the skin known as jaundice. Or the eye, when you look, when you pull down the eyelid, it looks white, known as interus, icterus rather, that occurs when a large number of red blood cells undergo hemolysis are changes. They will have fatigue or fussiness from anemia. 
of painful swelling of the hands and feet known as dactylitis. I should have really mentioned a picture. I want to look at it, don't forget. Complications of sickle cell disease, what are they? You have several, I couldn't even put everything, but I put some very good ones. You have complications which include acute chest syndrome. Sickling in blood vessels of the lungs can deprive lung of oxygen. This can damage lung tissue and cause chest pain, fever, and difficulty breathing. Acute chest syndrome is a medical emergency. So just, you have to rush them to the hospital. If not, it could cause death. So they need to be rushed for treatment. And they have to have, when they have start to have the severe acute symptoms in the chest, a fever, severe chest pain, cannot breathe, but medical emergency. You have acute pain crisis, also known as sickle cell or vaso-occlusive crisis. Just what we had mentioned before, all the blood vessels become clogged, and this can happen without warning when sickle cell block blood flow. People describe this pain as sharp, intense, it can be stabbing or throbbing. The pain can strike almost anywhere in the body and in more than one spot at a time. Common areas affected by pain include the abdomen, the chest, lower back, or arms and legs. The crisis can be brought on by high, high altitude. You hear about um, reggae boys or other persons who go to Mexico to play football, they usually carry them to the Azteca Stadium. It's not that they have other stadium, you know. They have, uh, they have other stadium, but for you to perform well at the, in that stadium, you have to get acclimatized for it is at a very high altitude. So people with sickle cell disease, when they go to high altitude, like if they climb high, high mountains and so on, and if they have dehydration, if they have other illnesses or if they are stressed, or the temperature changes to low. They do better in heat, in, in humid con condition than in cold condition. Often a person does not know what triggers the crisis, but if they go in those situations, it will be easily triggered. So like in very cool air conditioned places, they will not do well. They might have to have on a lot of sweater, more than one sweater and other form of clothing too. You have delayed growth and puberty. So children who have sickle cell disease may grow and develop more slowly than their peers because of anemia. They will reach full sexual maturity, but this may be delayed. So that is what we say, delayed puberty. Puberty is a period of life of a boy or girl when they start to develop sexual maturity. Eye problem, sickle cell disease can injure blood vessels in the eye, most often in the retina. Blood vessels in the retina can overgrow and get black or bleed. And this can cause the retina to detach. When the retina is detached, Unless they do surgery, you can't see a thing. It's just like a cloud, looks like a, a, a curtain black out the rays. These problems can lead to vision loss or total blindness. You have kidney problems. Sickle cell disease may cause the kidneys to have trouble making the urine as concentrated as it should be. This may lead to a need to urinate often and to have bedwetting or unco uncontrolled urination during the night. 
And then if parents are not aware of what is happening to the child, sometimes they could be um, even beating the child. Although no child should get any beating for bedwetting. You have um, other means of controlling it. There is something that they call token economy. And I'm not talking about children with, with, um, with sickle cell disease now, but you have ordinary children who do bedwetting. You can use a system of reward rather than punishment to get them to stop. So what you can do is make up a chart of the night that the, the bed is not wet. And, they, and you can ask them to do the charting and give them a little prize if they have like five nights out of the week when they don't wet the bed, you give them a little token. And so gradually they will learn not to wet the bed. But if you beat them, um, sometimes it does not go away and does not help. But it can be controlled otherwise from beating. Uh, you know, that Jamaican parents like the harsh type of punishment. And if you hear some, some harsh punishment that, that parents uh, give to children for some simple things, you would wonder, you would wonder if there should be really be any parents. It should not be. Because if you are going to put a child's finger in fire to burn it because them teeth look at sugar and they drink look at milk, it should not be a parent. So we say that it will, when they have this type of problem with the kidneys, they tend to pass more urine and at night time, you know, that children are not waking up to pass urine. So they will wet the bed. But um, parents could control this a little by giving them less fluid near to bedtime. And then it would control it somehow. All right, these are some of the other complications that we couldn't go into detail with. So you have gallstones. So how I call gallstones break down in the red blood cells, leave a portion there that um, tend to be hard and it called gallstone. You have heart problems. You can have coronary heart disease where you have a heart attack as well. You have regular infections, joint problems that we mentioned, leg ulcers. Leg ulcers is a big one. Some, some persons with um, severe anemia, they almost have constant leg ulcers. And liver problems, pre-pathism, which is something that affects the um, the male. So the penis become erected because of the problem with um, the the sickle blood cells in the vein that are in the blood vessels that supply the penis. And they get this. So if they don't get treatment, they could have some severe problems. Have to get them to treatment. Stroke or silent brain injury. Another big one that maybe I did not mention specifically is um something that is called splenic sequestration. I think I mentioned it last week, but. At the, near to the end, I have shown a picture or two with how the spleen becomes enlarged because it sucks up a lot of the blood. And if you don't get the child to treatment, they could die from anemia, severe anemia, because the blood is sucked up by the spleen and not available for general circulation. All right. so. At the end of the day, if you have sickle cell disease, you have to learn to live with it. Most people who have sickle cell disease should see their doctor every three to 12 months. It depends on what appointment they give. If some people have severe problems, 
they might need to see them more often than this, but when they get stabilized and know to manage their condition, they will give them longer appointments. And also this is dependent on the age. You have to learn to manage the pain. When an acute crisis is just starting, they should drink a lot of fluid and take what we call non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication. It's talking about some simple pain medication like the ordinary brufen and the acetaminophen or acetamol. Those are the ones that they would take, which are over-the-counter drugs. You don't have to go to a doctor to get prescriptions to buy those. And you can take it very often and drink a lot of fluid, and that will tend to prevent the, the, the painful crisis from progressing. But if you have taken all of that and you still have it, you will need to like, go to the hospital to get treatment. If the client cannot control the pain at home, he or she should go to a sickle cell disease day hospital or outpatient unit or an emergency room to receive additional stronger medicine and they will give intravenous fluid. The client may be able to return home once the pain is under better control. Clients may, the client may need to be admitted to hospital to fully control an acute pain crisis. So sometimes they might keep them in for three days. One week will, will be long for this, but they might have to keep some people up to a week until it is resolved. All right. Um, if you look right across here, this is a child with an enlarged spleen. And another this is a normal spleen over here, enlarged spleen. And this is not even a good picture. When it is very enlarged, it can go right across the abdomen. It's so big. And they usually teach parents to feel for the spleen. But when that happens, it's an emergency that they have to rush them to hospital to get treatment. All right. so. That concludes the presentation and um, a bit of information, but now we will have the discussion. So the floor will be open for discussion. I will not stop sharing the screen for if you want to look back on something I can go, but we will have discussion at this time. Floor is open. I, I am the first one, I love you again. Yes, sir. Um, I am. I am wondering. You see, looking at the shape of the cell, the normal yes. cell and the sickle cell, yes, um, I am wondering if in treatment, if exercise will be able to help the blood to move a little better um, in the sickle cell. Exercise does help. It will not change the sickle cell, but um, it does help to. to to lessen the pain sometimes, and it might help with the with the, the circulation. But in first world countries, in the United States, for instance, they have medication that can give to the persons to prevent the or lessen the cells from become taking on the sickle shape. When we talk about um, bone marrow transplant, the bone marrow are where the blood the blood um, cells are produced. So when they do that type of transplant, they get healthy bone marrow from a donor. And in so doing, they destroy the, the one that produced the original bone marrow that produced the sickle cell. Okay. And then they start to produce normal cells. But to get a donor, they have to do a lot of tests to, to see that they are compatible same blood type, and that it doesn't cause a lot of problem after they get the bone marrow transplant. But oh. it, um, the exercise will help, but it is not a cure for it. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. 
take part in the discussion. Anybody ask any question, Great. make any comment. Greetings, everyone. Hello, Fega, could you explain to me what is the leg ulcer? All right. Um, the leg ulcer, especially the, the lower the lower part of the, the feet from the the and the ankle area there. Um, you have sores because of poor circulation. Sores break out and when they just one part and it well another part breaks out. It is especially people who have long standing sickle cell disease. And they have to constantly, you know, get dressing and learn to dress at home. I have not seen anybody with leg ulcer for a good while, but then you see, I am not really visiting the sickle cell clinic. But it is a, it used to be a big problem, and it might continue to be a big problem. The ulcers that um, we are talking about sores when we talk about ulcers, the sores that break out. On the, on the legs or on the feet. Is that helpful, Michelle Brown? Yes, sir. Um, before we usually know about that, I remember my aunt, she had this leg, same place that you're talking about. Yeah. And you know, in those days, not going to the doctor, they always say people give them foot and all those things. We know, we know them after, <laughs> Yes. Is after and then one of the time it got better, then it broke up back again and everything. And then she spent all years instead of going to the doctor, going to places, trying to get the foot better because if somebody do give them foot and all those yes, things. But you yes. know, gradually we learn now about yes. this leg ulcer and all this about it. Yes. And, and, and let me say, let me say, if it is just one leg that has the ulcer, sometimes it is what they call um. Those persons might be suffering from poor blood circulation. But if you have uncontrolled diabetes for a long time, it will result in poor circulation to the legs. And sometimes you see people with, with, with amputated uh, limbs, especially foot, which is caused from yeah. uh, Poor circulation. Poor blood circulation. So it is not only yes. sickle cell that can cause it. There are several other blood yeah. disorders yeah. that can cause it. Yeah, I remember yes. when yes. I poor went to circulation. operate on my eye, and I was this porter was pushing me to the theater and I crossed my legs, and he was saying to me, "Say, pull your legs." I said, "Why should I pull my leg?" He said, pull it. Yeah. I said, why should I? If you can't explain to me, then I'm not doing because I'm comfortable on my back doing that. And he said to me that if I don't, if I ever saw the people with the legs or down the, down the foot there, what you say, oh, it is black in terms of it's because of yeah. poor circulation. And if we keep, keep crossing my legs and like that, then we have poor circulation. And then it will turn out and the swords and the people then foot. You know, and he was sure. explaining to me to that. And from that, sir, I try, you know, you lean on your back, that is most comfortable. But I realize, you know, when I'm doing it, I try to uncross my legs and like that. And I remember this nurse girl was telling me that, you know, when I get the aspirin, she was saying to me, Miss Pansy, Miss Pansy, you must take it, you know, don't stop taking it because it helps the poor circulation, your blood to circulate more so that your foot won't be like yeah. that and then it bursts out and everything like that. Yes, so it, it is true that when you see the, the dark and, um, feet there. Sometimes it is a most time it is a sign of poor circulation. Um, mm -hmm. Why why the area become dark? But um, oh, he was explaining it. <laughs> that is not the main reason why you get it too. Because yeah. across the legs. Yes, yes sir. The main reason. That if, if you have it already, that will help to make it worse when you cross it. Okay. Oh, not the okay. Hmm. And the gallstone, sorry, you're talking about the gallstone. Um, yeah. you said that it, it it is caused from the, the sickle cell. Yeah, it is um, not the only reason, but that is one of the reasons. Okay, you're, then you're, because you're people with gallstone that is not caused from sickle cell. Okay, that's why I I asked that because I remember one time Marky had 
passing out some girls stone and you know went down to public and the doctor said to the girl stone and he was passing it out why yeah. he was in such much so much pain and everything like that and right now I have a cousin she had it and she had some operation she did some operation and right now I understand that the last operation that she did she's not walking now yeah. Um, but they say the girls stone and what's the operation she had to do and all that. So she's not walking now. So yeah. as I say, it's right. probably it's not exactly the sickle cell. No, it's not sickle cell. You have several other things that can cause girls stone. And as you say, it is a okay, so painful, painful situation. It is good when you yes, can sir. pass them out. Yes. When sir. it is more serious and when it will not pass out, that is the time they would have to do surgery. And sometimes they can give give people things they use, certain um, things that can destroy this this stone. Well, inside. But okay, um, thanks, sir. God, so thanks very much. Painful disorder. Yes, sir. When him take him in crime, 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 and rush him to the doctor. Yes. <laughs> sometimes even pain medication will not help. Thanks, sir, for the information. Okay, my pleasure. Praise the Lord. Good night, everyone. I really do enjoy the delivery of the message and the information, and I appreciate it. But I want to know, um, as it regards to the sickle cell, is it that it depends on the blood type of the parents, or can it be um, derived based on like different blood types of two parents, or that is the only way it can be derived? All right, I don't know if you were at the start of the presentation, um, but let me go back to, if I see if I can go back to the slide. But, um, all right, so we say um, sickle cell disease. Are you seeing the slide, sister? Bigford? Yes, yes, I'm seeing this slide. All right, so these are two parents up here, mother, father, father, mother, and both of them, for a person to get sickle cell disease, not only one parent, but the two parents would have to have sickle cell trait. The blue that you see here is depicting normal hemoglobin. You seeing the blue up here? Yes, sir. Are you seeing the, where I point, I'm pointing? Yes, sir, I'm seeing it. So the red here depicts sickle cell. Uh, yes, sickle cell abnormal hemoglobin. All right, so we were talking about some of the possibilities when these two people come together and have children you can have a, a, a possibility where 25 percent of their children could have normal cell they don't have no sickle at all 50 percent of their children could have sickle cell trait depicted by hair, and then another 25% would have full-blown sickle cell anemia. So for you to have sickle cell anemia, um, you have to inherit it by, from some parents, from your parents, both parents. And the incidence of, of um, sickle cell trait is very high in the population. I think last week I had mentioned that one in 10 person would have the sickle cell trait. So you see that is a very high incident. So if one in 10 have it, some persons are going to, you are going to have two people with the trait coming together, but most people are not going to do any blood test before they have any relationship. And even if they know, some people may say, sure, they take me chance. So, so Jamaican thing. So that is how a child will end up maybe not having it, none at all. 
And last week, Sister Sharon, I don't know if she's online now, but she had mentioned that her first daughter, Sister Saman, does not have, she has perfectly normal um, hemoglobin. While she has, her son has sickle cell, and it seems to be a lesser form for her. It doesn't have any, uh, uh, some of the traits that we're talking about. And she used to take him to the clinic and for many years he has not gone. And we don't hear that he's admitted to hospital or so. so. Yes, sir. But you see the reason why I asked was because, um, is, well, maybe it is that there are tests that maybe um, the test didn't show any of the parents having a trait. But there was an incident here in my family where both parents they did their blood test because when you're pregnant, you automatically have to do that blood test. But both parents went and did a blood test. None of them have um, sickle cell, and the child came full blown. Um, all right, sickle all cell. right, all right. Let me see. You can do a blood test, and you, you did not test for sickle cell trait, you know, so it depends on what type of blood test that they did. You understand? If they were not specifically testing for sickle, it will not really pick it up. So it depends on what blood test that they did. Yes, sir, that is what they did, sir, because the child was so sick and so weak when the child born, and he has to be stringed up and all. So that's the reason why they went back again to test the parents to see how best they could assist the child, maybe with some genetics or something. And up until now, it's like the child still have it, and the parents are healthy and fine. So that's why I was no, asking. No. Remember what I said, that um, if the parents just have the trait, they would be healthy, they would not be sick. Sister Sharon has the trait, Brother Glenn has the trait, and they are not sick from, from any blood disorders. So the fact that the parents are healthy, that does not mean that they are not carriers of sickle cell trait. You see what I'm saying? But I don't know. It will almost be impossible for a child to come down with a sickle cell disease if none of the parents have any treat. That is almost impossible. Okay. Yes, sir. Mm. So. It depends on what blood test they did. If they were not testing specifically for sickle cell trade, they would not really find it. But when, when you are going to, when you are pregnant, I know that they want to find out the iron level in your blood to see if you have weak blood or, but one of the things why they have to do that testing, you know, the pregnant feet, the pregnant, the child or the fetus is going to pull iron from the mother. And if you don't have enough iron in your system, that is why they have to give pregnant women a, um, a lot of iron supplements. They are going to become very anemic, but the child is ensuring that they're pulling up to have healthy bones and healthy teeth and, and, and so on. But um, they could do that test and not necessarily check for the sickle cell trait. Anyhow, we appreciate your contribution, nevertheless. Yes, greetings, everyone. Greetings, Sister Sharon. Yes, as you were talking on the topic of sickle cell, I do believe it is impossible for a child to have sickle cell disease without if both parents don't have the trait. It they is impossible. It. Yeah, yes, it is true. because as we said, but Glenn didn't know that he had sickle cell trait and he was living all along with it. Yes. I didn't know neither that I had it until one time I, I was having terrible pain, went to the doctor and then they do all that blood work went for the result. And she told me that I had a sickle cell trait. And as yeah. I said, I didn't have much knowledge. I didn't know anything about sickle cell. 
I don't know anything. I didn't know I didn't research it. Since I've played, I started researching about the sickle cell and know more about it. And as I said, when I had my son too, I can recall that I had to put him in the morning, in the early sun that comes up in the morning. I had to sure. put him in his bath and put that thing over his eye for him to get that first one because he, he was, his eyes were jaundiced. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. and the nurse it instructed me in the morning that when the sun is up, the first sun that arrives, put him on the barn away that look the sun shines, yes. put something across his high, and then I put him up in the sun that he can get that first sun. I don't know what it really does to the body, but they said that's what I was to do. And I did it for a couple of months well. And when I took him back to the his clinic, he was perfectly fine. Yes. Um, yes, the, the sunshine is helpful for the maturation of um of the hemoglobin. Yes. So and one more thing. It, help, it helps to to get rid of the jaundice. Okay. Mm. What is the purpose of the the spleen? Because I know some of the person with sickle cell they have to took out they they took out the spleen and they can live a normal life. So what is the purpose of the spleen? All right. The spleen has several functions. It is it helps to manufacture blood cells, okay. but also it helps to protect against infection. So the spleen is one of the main organs that help to fight infection. It makes about it makes white blood cells too, and some of the the blood cells that help to fight infection in the body. The spleen is good at that. But you can live without it. You can live without it, although you will be more susceptible to infection. But as you say, one of the reasons why they have to take out the spleen, I mentioned about splenic, what they call splenic sequestration. That is a condition in which the spleen suck up the blood that is in the body. And if all of that blood that is in the body is sucked up by the spleen, the person can die from anemia, just like that. Enough, enough red blood cell is not available to grow on in the body. So they have to rush them when that happens, they have to rush them, give them a lot of fluid. And if they see that it happened more than one time or several times, they're going to plan operation to remove it. Isn't it? That is why they remove the spleen. Yes, thank you, sir. Okay. Still open for question. We still have um, about 12 minutes to nine, so we can use that time for comments and discussion. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night. Yes, sir. Um, I had a friend, um, one of my best friends who had passed, sure. right? And I know he, he had sickle cell and his family had um, sickle cell. But, yeah. um, well, it, it, they were saying two things. They were saying that um, because he started drinking the alcohol, so it probably triggered off the sickle cell or something like that. And also, well, the other one I would doubt it because I mean, sorry, just the, the, forget about the next one, Elder. But um, they said the alcohol and the smoking of the ganja can that um contribute to someone's who, who have sickle cell um demise? Yes, most definitely. But let me say, both both of them will affect the blood vessels and will affect the quality of the hemoglobin too. Okay. So, you know, I knew, I knew an asthmatic gentleman that he was a big smoker. Can you imagine, remember that asthma is something that affects the lungs and the, yes. the, 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 the blood, the um, blood carrying um, capacity of oxygen. And that man usually abused and then he used to take it as a joke that as soon as he gets shortness, he just go KPH and I force him to go lay down in bed. You understand? 
Yeah, I know that he must listen up. So as yes, you were sir. talking about, that is a no-no for, a, as, for a, as somebody with um with um sickle cell disease. Right, right. Alcohol, what? alcohol and smoking help to narrow the blood vessels even more. Yes, sir, and 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 I must say he passed at a very young age. Yeah, man, very he young age. Young because he never appreciated was, life. Right, he was like um twenty eight, twenty nine when he passed yes, away. Yes. Right. He never appreciated life. He could be still right. alive if he was taking care of himself. Right. I also have a friend, sir, who went well while I was going to heart. There was a young man there who had the sickle cell disease. But I think he had it very bad. Sometimes he would just be there and he just like um, faint or drop down, you know? So yeah. I think his one was very bad. Yes, yes sir. but, but um, as it really is to drop down, as we say, if you know how to take care of yourself, you will survive better and live longer. So yes, sir. This is what we call self-care. Parents, look after you when you are small, but when you get bigger, you have to do self-care. So if you know that um, going in cold condition will cause you to, you know, to feel shivery and cause the crisis to come on you, wear your sweater, eh? That's true, sir. And wear something on your head and so on. But you know, some people want to say him not soft. So, it doesn't look like him soft if him be weird and type or something like that. But whether you soft or not, you are sick. Yes, sir. And, and also, sir, he always used this term where he said, boy, I'm not a doctor. And he said, I'm a doctor. And it was so, sir. You know, the time when they rush him to the hospital, he never make it out. You know? Well, you see, if you, anybody, and that it is not only with sickle cell, if you have other health conditions and you have that type of, that type of belief, Mind. so you're not a good doctor. Well, going to doctor is not a crime, it's not a sin. And doctors can usually know more than the patient. That's how you go. Doctors usually know more than the patient. And if they, if they tell you that you must avoid certain things and you must do certain things and you don't do it, well, you know that the end result will not be good. Last week I mentioned that you have some mothers, some mothers who become pregnant and they send them to do certain blood tests or certain, for instance, if you are pregnant, and they send you to do a test that can measure the head circumference of the child. And so you need to do an ultrasound. And they tell you at what stage to do it so that, that they can measure the head circumference of the child. And there is a bone, a bone in the pelvis that the baby will have to pass through when the baby is being born, they want to see whether or not the head circumference is large, too large. If it cannot pass through, then you know that you're gonna have a stillbirth on your hand. And what they do for those persons with, with those peculiar problems is that they, they set them down to have a caesarean section. That as, as it comes near to, to have the pregnant, to, you know, to delivery, they just take the baby in. But yet some people not going to do it, to do the, the, the um, and you might say you're poor, but let me say, if you are poor and you want the best for the child, if I am borrow, if I borrow it for the day, ultrasound, I'm going to borrow it. Are you, you're going to go to the antenatal clinic. An antenatal clinic in government is free. You might have to wait long. But even when you go to some private doctor, if the doctor is popular, you have to wait long to, you know. So the only thing is that they might have a little more AC in the waiting area than in the public system. But you have to pay for it too. But may I tell you that um, you have some mothers 
who will not go to the clinic and then just rush down and to Billy, you will never to have baby. Tell me now. A mother who was constantly going to clinic and finding out what is wrong and what is, you know, what they need to correct and what they need to do. You don't think they will have a better outcome when it comes to giving birth? Well, some of the mothers who, who don't go to clinic, they die from um, fits. That is part of what they call um, a complication of pregnancy. When they have a fit right on the, the delivery bed, because they never, nobody never knows that they have um, pre-eclampsia, as they call it. So then just rush go. At the same time, when they're taking care of a baby, they have a fit, and if they don't lose a baby, they might die. I mentioned that to say that it's the same way if you have sickle cell disease and you don't take care of yourself, you're going to die early. Get is not afraid of you. And um, when it comes to Christian people, we might have relatives, it might not happen to us, but we have relatives and if they can't take telling, for some people can't take telling. You tell them and you try to focus them and them say, me I live my life how me feel. You have to die from something. But you see, when the problem come, when the attack ups come, sometimes are the pair are the one who have looking means by that have looking money. And they may follow on. So I have to encourage family members and anybody who we know with sickle cell disease to get the best care that they can. And they will live longer and live better life too. All right. I like the discussion this week. I like the discussion. And we still have some minutes. Some, we still have a few minutes. As I say, if you make a comment or if you ask a question, it cannot be, it cannot be foolish, you know. It's just part of the contribution to the discussion. Okay, then it looks like, uh, may I thank you for listening and for participating. It seems as if I will have to turn over to Bishop Thorpe now to make the final comment. And I trust that um, persons who listen were edified and have more information as it relates to sickle cell disease. And you can go and do your own reading now and um, fill out information that was not presented here. I couldn't talk about everything and something you just touch. So thank you for your attention and for your participation. And I turn over to Bishop Thorpe at this time. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful tonight. Wonderful. Thank you, Ella Fagan. And thank you, Bridget, that participated tonight. Um, we really are edified. I, I am certainly informed. And I want to say again, thanks to Ella Fagan for coming on and brethren let us be let us be fair um these sort of information are not readily available in the form that we have it tonight i mean yes of course we can go and we can do research but um i must be honest with you some of the medical terms and so that are used it is better when we have a presenter that you know, use your time from busy schedule and come and give us. And I really want to appreciate um, Ella Fagan on this. Honestly, I didn't know a lot about, um, I just hear about sickle cell. I know um, I used to have people 
co-workers with Supercell and sometimes we see they really, uh, they are so sick. Maybe that's why they're sick. <laughs> they're so sick. And sometimes you wonder um, what they are going through. But now we understand and I think we are better able to even um, last, I think it was last week, yeah. It was last week that I asked a question and, and um, I was told by Ella Fagan that there are other sicknesses also, not just sickle cell. There are other sicknesses that you can pass on to your offspring. So we know what is happening now and therefore we are better informed. God bless you everyone again and thank you for coming on tonight. And we'll be having these sort of um, lecture in different forms. I realize that I'm really doing a national um, broadcast now in Bible study. And sometimes we need variation. I think um, variety is the spice of life. So <laughs> we are still human beings. Amen. We are in the flesh. So let nobody fool you that we are in the flesh. So if you get your hand broken, then you need to go to the hospital and, and get it um, set or uh, whatever. We need to understand that we are still human beings. We are in the flesh. We are not angels. We are flesh and blood. All right? And the Lord wants us to prosper as our soul prosper. God bless you again, everyone, and thank you again, Elder Fagan. And let us bow ahead and close off tonight. Eternal God and our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you for the information, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the presenter. We thank you for us, Lord, who are edified and are more knowledgeable about what is happening, Lord, in our bodies and our environment. We thank you for everything. And Lord Jesus, as we're about to um, bring this session to a close, we pray that you'll go with us and that you'll keep us on the earth, Lord. So we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make this face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Give you peace. Let all the people say, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless.